McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 13 of this NHL 21 Edmonton Oilers franchise mode here in oil country. If you guys have missed any of the last episodes up to this point, make sure you go up into the top corner of the video right now, click the card there. It will send you to the entire playlist so you can get caught up on whatever you've missed. Also, if you enjoy the video, make sure you go down below, drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're trying to hit that thousand sub goal and we're definitely on our way there. And uh, also make sure to leave comments to possibly get featured in upcoming episodes. But anyways, let's jump into this episode. So guys, last episode we were eliminated early from the 2024 playoffs, I believe it was. Let me just check my binder here real quick. Keeping track of all this. Yeah, it would have been the 2024 playoffs. Also, do you guys like the uh, like the little Oilers Santa hat I got going on here? I like it, so I think it fits pretty perfectly for this series. Anyways, um, today we get into the contract signing phase here. And uh, first off, let's get into some comments to kind of figure out how the direction of this episode is going to go. So the first comment here came from Lil Pika XD Micah saying, you should bring Carson Lambos into the Oilers defense for a little bit more strength. I agree. I think that's a really good idea when you, you know, look at our defensive core here. It isn't exactly the biggest in the NHL. Um, we definitely have some guys on the way that are going to add to that for sure. Guys like Goldobin, uh, Coburn, even Josephson. Like these guys are all big defensemen for sure. They've got quite a bit of size to them and they're going to be able to add to the physicality, except maybe Goldobin. But um, yeah, those guys will definitely be good additions to our defense. Strimbu is definitely small, but Lambos, we will be trying to get into the actual uh, NHL this year as, again, he's pretty much NHL ready. Um, and yeah, that should be a nice addition to our back end for sure. Um, besides that, the other comment here from Gabriel S said, I would always try to draft as many elite players as possible, even if... I think he's saying even if you don't need them as they provide great trade value and can get you picks or good players and help in package deals. Uh, like if you want to trade for the first overall pick, a medium elite prospect would give good value. I know it's pretty long, but uh, great content though. Keep them coming. Thanks, Gabriel. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the comments for sure. And that was kind of it for comments that are you know actually going to get featured here today. Um, besides that, I think we're kind of ready to go here as far as getting some signings done. So we have three big name signings that we have to get done today. Those players consist of Ilya Samsonov, who is going to be expensive. Um, Leon Dreisaitl, obviously, you know, big name player. He's going to want a lot of money. Yep. Big time. And, uh, Jakob Chicharin, who's actually looking like he's going to be a steal of a deal here for the next five years or so. That's actually really good. So let's get the financial calculator out here. We're going to do the rule of 85 and uh, we're going to go from there. So first off, Dreisaitl does want to resign with the team and he wants a $10.6 million deal till he's 35 years old. So if we do that times 85%, that is a 9 0.05 million dollar deal about so we're going to offer him probably nine and a half i would think that's enough to get him to resign and for seven years you know that doesn't quite take up a third of our cap space so that's a good signing there for sure uh jacob chicharin again i'd like to sign him for even longer if we could um seven years would be an awesome deal in my opinion sign him until he's what 32 33 I would take that, and he wants 5.99 million there, about 6 million. So let's just go 6 times 85. So it's going to be a $5.2 million deal. You know what? If we can pay him 5.5 for the next 7 years, I would totally take that. That would be a great deal, in my opinion. Um, we've obviously paid more for less quality players in the past um, compared to those guys. So I think those are both good deals. Stuart Skinner going to be a nice cheap contract here. I think we're going to offer him a million bucks, but we'll offer it to him for like two or three years here instead. Um, let's do three years at $1 million. I think that is a good deal. 
and then Samsonov does not want to re-sign, so we're going to have to kind of blow this deal up more. He wants a deal till he's 34 years old. Um, I think he would start to regress by then, so let's sign him till he's 32. And he still wants $8.5 million. We're going to offer him 8.5 to start. If he doesn't sign that deal, then we're going to have to go bigger. But I think that's all we're going to try to do for now, just those four sign-ins. Um, Heinen and Jones and these guys, we're just going to actually, let's see how much they are first off. Um, Dante Heinen, pretty cheap contract overall, but again, we're still going to apply that rule of 85 just to try to save some money. And this would be a $4.45 million deal, so 4.5 or 1.45 sorry so let's offer that to Heinen as he has been a pretty decent center overall for us and then I can do a 900k contract for Jones who else do we got Josh Mahura um I don't think that one's happening I think we're going to qualify him there and then besides that Cooper Marodi I would like to re-sign but when we take a look at our center core here we probably don't really need to sign him honestly because we got four good centers. Um, we got Budai coming up. He's going to be awesome as well. We got Lavoie. And then I'm going to go out and sign this uh, John Beach guy that we just drafted last episode. And that kind of gives us four main centers there in the AHL. Um, Lavoie, I want to play in the NHL this year as well. I think he's ready. He's 23 years old. So we could definitely do that. I think I'm going to sign Cooper Marodi. He's still a cheap deal under a million bucks a year for the next two years i'll take it same thing with kara again two-year deal these are cheap contracts overall not really going to affect us long term and uh besides that well we do have atu ratty coming up next year so that's going to be a pain but tyler benson we can offer him two million bucks for a single year see if he takes it kuffner same kind of deal he's going to be cheap uh just like a bunch of our other ahl guys we've signed and then I think I'm definitely going to sign. Pekarinen is a walk-off, I would say. Um, where is... Well, we'll sign Typolis because he's ready to play. Hanu Typolis, yeah, he'll be nice. Um, Pekarinen's playing overseas, so that doesn't matter. Uh, I believe Fenton's playing in the queue, is he not? Yes, he is. 73 points, so he's going to continue to grow. And then Keith Spencer, I think this is his year as well. I think we're going to sign him up. So that gives us one, two, three, four, definitely four, if not five or six left wingers there. Um, Benson, who knows if he's going to sign or not. And then looks like, actually, no, our, our right wing's looking really good overall. And we added another piece too here with uh, William Eaves. He's going to be awesome. He's going to be playing in the NHL this upcoming season. And besides that, you know, Kuplin, Novak, those are good players. Um, we might re-sign Blumel, but we're not going to re-sign Curry. I don't think he's 31 now, so I think we're just going to let him walk. But uh, match a Blumel, we will sign. And then besides that, anybody else on defense? I think we kind of got through the defense already, didn't we? Oh, well, not all of it. Uh, Dmitry Samarukov, probably a good signing, even though he is, you know, getting up there already in age at 25. And then Lajeson, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to sign him or not. Um, Moden, same kind of deal. Wait, let's see. One, two, three. Giordano's probably not going to play. Four, five, six with Strimbu. And then question marks. Okay, so let's just advance a day here now. I think we kind of got everything sorted out. So let's just see who signs, who doesn't, what goes on. Obviously, we're going to have all of the coaches going first. So Heinen rejects, Dreisaitl rejects, awesome, great start. Um, <laughs> Kara signs, Jones signs, Chitrin signs that 5.5, that's awesome. William Eves joins the team. Let's go. Uh, Ilya Samsonov signs the 8.5 for the next five years, that is awesome. Benson signs, um, Skinner signs, awesome. Samarukov signs, uh, Marodi rejects though. Kuffner signs. Beach joins the team. Blumel signs. Typolis can't join due to a full roster. Spencer does sign though. So if we're at 50 out of 50 kind of range here, I think what we're going to do is somebody's a walk off here. I'm trying to remember who. Curry is a walk off, so we're going to release him. I think Lagerson's a walk off too, unfortunately. Like I hate to say it, but. Um, I think we might have to just uh, send him home or send him 
to free agency. Sorry, not send him home. Um, <laughs> so let's offer Typolis the contract again. So we have two big names that we still need to sign for sure. Um, those two guys consist of, who is it again? Sorry, it was uh, Dreisaitl and um, who else? Well, Dreisaitl for one. That's a big name contract for sure. Um, he didn't take nine and a half. Let's try 9.75. Again, if he doesn't accept it, we're doing 10. Um, cause obviously we are going to re-sign Dreisaitl and forgive me for the dog barking in the background. It happens. So, um, let's try two years at one and a half there. And then Marodi, you know, if he doesn't want to sign with us, which it's kind of feeling like that's kind of the vibe I'm getting right now. Let's do a one way contract at a million bucks for two years. See if he accepts that. And here we go. So Heinen again rejects. Okay. And then Dreisaitl signs the nine and a half. That's Gore, 9.75, sorry. And Marodi rejects as well. Typolis does join. So, um, questions at center for sure. Mainly, are these guys even going to resign or are we just going to let them walk? I do want to bring back Heinen, but at the same time, I feel like we could definitely find a better third or fourth line kind of checking center here. That's that's what I'm kind of getting the feeling of. Um, yeah, yeah, this isn't spectacular, um, but we can definitely figure this out for sure. So, worst case scenario, we trade Dante Heinen if he, well, two million bucks. That's the best offer he's going to get. I don't think we are going to offer Marodi a extension anymore here. He's kind of blown it here, rejected two in a row. And, uh, okay, Heinen finally accepts that one. So I think that's it as far as contracts go. We might get Josh Mahura back here. Um, but besides that, I do actually just want to see who are pending free agents because we don't really have that much money, but that's fine. Actually, we have $7 million, so that's actually a decent amount still. Sidney Crosby is a... Uh, is a UFA here, fits forward line three. That's not exactly what we're looking for. Um, hmm. Who else could we get? Konechny is nice, uh, forward line three though. If anything, we're looking for a power forward. Ugh, forward line three again, come on, man. What about Advander Kane? That's interesting. Vertanen doesn't fit, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Dominic Cahoon is an interesting one because he fits forward line two as a playmaker. Hmm. What about any potential steals here? Uh, doesn't look like it either. <laughs> okay, so there's probably not all that much available. Um, Shesterkin is a nice goalie for sure, but overall, you know, there are decent goalies in here still. Um, Kemper's good. Corpus is good. There's lots of good goalies. We've got Samsonov, so I'm not really worried. Um, so let's just advance to free agency, see who's still available there. We got seven mil to play with. And, you know, worst case scenario, we sign a one-year contract on somebody that's older just to, you know, kind of try and push us over the hump of getting a Stanley Cup and uh, then use the money to re-sign Ratty next year. I think that would be kind of the best way to go about this. So we are not trading Eves. Nice try. Nice try, NHL. Okay, that's ridiculous. Like William Eves. Oh yeah, just just sell him. No, no, we're holding on to him. Why is he in junior right now? Like he's going to be playing in our team. We're going to let him play this year. Um. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so I might toss the door off up there. Anybody else? Like, I think it's just mainly draft picks that we want to kind of toss up here. I've traded away so many firsts. <laughs> um, let's just toss, like, some third, fourth, fifth, and sixth rounders up there. Okay. So, um, we're currently under the contract limit, which is kind of funny. Let's see who's available in free agency. Who could we potentially bring in? Um, looks like Crosby did get re-signed. 
Blake Wheeler wants a lot of money, considering he's 78 overall. That's too bad. Um, but Mantha is an interesting one, for sure. That is somebody I would potentially look to sign. No report on Advander Kane, so that's not great. Um, any other power forwards in here? That's kind of what I'm looking for right now. Some older ones in here. Vertanen's not too old, actually, but... Uh, Oh, I hate that. That's still a bug there. When you use the triggers, it doesn't go from the exact guy that you were just on. It tosses it wherever it feels like. There is, like, really not a great selection of power forwards overall here. Tage Thompson. Oh, come on, man. I, I'm looking for a power forward that's going to fit the team well, and I'm just not finding it. I do want... Actually, Tage Thompson looks like a really good deal. Is he an RFA? He is not, so I think we're going to take a risk on him, bite the bullet a little on price, and just offer him that. That's half of our uh, salary right there, which, you know, I'm okay with. And then besides that, let me just look, see what we kind of need to still obtain here for our team. Uh, the other thing that I'm interested in is coaching staff. That is definitely something that we could be looking to improve on here pretty quickly and this is not the system we want to be playing anymore so let's uh let's see if there's coaches available definitely a lot of coaches available let's see if any of them fit the system i want to play and that is almost exactly what i want to play it's close um what about cardwell again same exact system but not exactly what i'm looking for nope nope Come on, man. There's a bunch of decent forward coaches here, but they're just not. Okay, we might bite the bullet on this a little bit, um, which is okay. I think this will still work out. I think we are going to go for, I think, Lorac. Um, Actually, how much money do we have? We don't quite have $2 million, so maybe we'll go for Cardwell instead. You know, still a very similar system fit. Um, not great overall on McDavid, Pugliarvi, those guys. That's, eh. Yikes, okay. Um, is LaRock better? Not really. Um, this isn't great. Uh, um, okay, I know this is the system we want to build around moving forward, but at the same time... Okay, I'm going to send... Cardwell, an associate coach job right now for just over a million bucks. Actually, we could offer him 1.2 million probably. That's about an appropriate price, I'd say. So let's offer that just for now. Um, we're going to have to go back, change the coaching staff around ever so slightly as I smack my microphone again. Um, so let's just demote him here to NHL goalie coach for now. Para... I honestly can't remember. So yeah, that should be fine. That should all work out. Um, yeah, okay. So we should hopefully get that coach here right away in uh, Cardwell. I forget what his first name was, honestly. But um, we offered that one contract for Tage Thompson. And then besides that, we might send a defensive offer here. Actually, no, we don't need to. We really don't need an extra defenseman. We don't have... A whole ton of cap space for it either so um i think the team's honestly pretty well off let's just check the progress reports kind of see how the team's going to line up as far as positions go and uh then go from there obviously mcdavid dry sidle heinen and then i'm thinking buddha is going to be our fourth line center that's looking all really good um Ratty Verana or Verana Ratty around that kind of setup. And then maybe Benson in here or Wagner, one of those guys as well. And then I don't know why, but uh, Eves is in the system still. We're going to have him playing in the NHL this year, guaranteed. Three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, so Chitrin definitely made the biggest steps in growth and. Uh, you know, upped um, overall this year, 
but Lambos is definitely in there and Strimbu as well. So I think Lambos will hopefully get the call up. You know, he had a much better season this year. Putting up, well, not much better. It was his first year in the AHL, put up 41 points. Not terrible. Um, so I think he can crack the NHL this year. I, we're going to let him crack the NHL this year. And overall, I don't think we need to sign anybody else. I think the team is in a very good spot right now. I think we are going to... Uh, okay, so Bo Cardwell does sign the contract there. That's gorgeous because now we can move things around. Wow, that is an absolutely lopsided offer. <laughs> All guys that are under 23 years old in exchange for two old guys that I don't want. I don't think that's happening. Tage Thompson does sign the contract, though. 6'5 power forward. You'll love to see those guys join the team here. So we definitely added some size. And I think that's all we're going to do in the offseason here, really. We're going to get the team set up, and I think we might get right through a full season here in simulation just based on the fact that the team's looking so gorgeous right now. <laughs> Guys, this is why the trade value system is still broken. You're offering me Zach Hyman on a one-year deal and a third and a fifth from Colorado, okay? Colorado might, even if they're a terrible team, those third and fifth round picks are still not very valuable. And they're trying to trade him for a second overall player and a starting potential goalie. What? Oh, guys, I totally just realized. This is my bad. Um, I didn't show you any of the statistics last episode as far as... I mean, I think we went through the regular season numbers and stuff like that. But besides that, um, I don't think we really showed too much of this. So let's get into the awards for this year. Um, so obviously the Florida Panthers win the cup. The Flyers were your President's Trophy winners after beating us out from last season. Clarence Campbell went to the Vegas Golden Knights, so we lost to the Golden Knights first round, and they went on to the finals. And then, obviously, Florida won the Prince of Wales. So, McDavid was your Art Ross winner, as well as Hart Memorial winner, so there's two awards for an Oiler right there. Provorov won the Norris. Huberto won the Lady Bing. Lamoureux won the Calder. Um, Barkov won the Conn Smythe for Florida. Carter Hart with the Vesna, as well as the Jennings there. Uh, Rako Gudas wins the Bill Masterton. Um, the Pylons coach, Latang there, wins the Jack Adams. Selkie goes to O'Reilly for the second year in a row. I almost had Berger on there. McDavid wins the Lindsay, and then the Rocket goes to Kucherov by one stinking goal. Um, so yeah, that one kind of stung, but you know, McDavid still wins three awards there, so not terrible. He had a pretty good season overall, 114 points, obviously. And uh, the team just needs to, you know, needs to do a little bit better in the regular season if we're going to perform in the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of our goal moving into the next season here. Okay, guys, so heading into the next season here, 92% of the tickets have sold for the entire arena. That's always a good thing. That means the Oilers are definitely on an upward trend. So, uh, yeah, let's see how the rest of this kind of turns out here as far as the team goes. So our owner goals look like all right we want 28 sellouts on home ice uh we want to win our regular season on Wimbledon and get 54 wins this season i think it's doable we actually haven't capped out past 54 before we got 53 um before i actually get into editing the lines 87 not too ratty geez before i get into editing the lines because i'm seeing right now that william eaves is not in here um let's just go and make some quick roster moves i do like how the team's looking though so roster moves is going to be our main focus here to start things off before there's any um waivers or anything like that so the players that are going to get moved down are going to consist of kuffner as well as probably teddy bluger i would assume actually no no it's going to be caleb jones those are the two guys we're going to send down and we're going to bring up Eves and Lambos. We're expecting a winning season this year, and we want these guys to contribute to that success. So let's uh, make these moves. I will have to fix my lines, but that is totally all right with me. How high rated is... Whew, par backer, looking like an absolutely gorgeous minor goalie there. That is, that is looking nice. He's going to be in the NHL in a year or two. That's scary. That's scary to even think about. My goodness. Okay. Yeah. And how old is he? He's got to be like 20. Yeah, 20 years old. Jeez. Par backer looking real nice. Yeah, jeez. Um, Goldobin didn't really grow. A lot of guys didn't really grow over the offseason. I mean, Coupland went up two ratings. He had a pretty good season last year, didn't he? Yeah, 41. Or no, never mind. He only had eight points. I was looking at his uh, 
other numbers there. That was not so spectacular. How about Helms? He's 20 years old. Okay. For a fifth round pick, he's developing pretty decently. And then obviously we've got Keith Spencer in here too. But let's get back to editing the lines now. So this team is going to be... Uh, it's looking interesting for sure. That is uh, that is definitely how I describe it. So we're gonna have dry settle first line still, McDavid second. That's kind of how we're gonna be running things here. Really, Verana doesn't fit there. Oh, I guess not. Okay, cool. Um, but Budai does, I guess. Okay. Um, Tage Thompson, good second third line kind of fit here. We're not gonna get more than plus three with that. Yamo is actually a real nice fit there on that first line too. What about? Second, 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 first, first, fourth, okay. So I might run a plus one just to have Atsu Ratty actually playing in the top six now. Um, I know it's not the most spectacular setup, but that's how we're going to do it. How does Eves fit in here? Ooh, we could play on that first line possibly if we manage this properly. So let's try Yamo goes over. Budai is going to move down down for let's let's say Merkley for now um, and then let's sub Merkley out for Eves see how this looks and still a plus three that's gorgeous that's what I want to see so I think that's where we're gonna start William Eves this year is on the first line with Dreisaitl and Yamamoto we're gonna hope he can grow at you know the huge sized body he brings to the team there Freaking 6'4", 10, he's absolutely massive. Um, and, you know, we are kind of snuffing Athi Ratty here, not going to lie. But at the same time, having those plus threes on the top end is going to make a huge difference overall as far as how the team plays. I don't know if we can really improve this system too much more. Um, Heinen maybe on the second line might make a difference, but Lavoie is a very nice fit there too. So maybe we go like this. Let's go Budai at center. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is gorgeous right there. That is exactly what we were looking for. Nice. Like, that was really exactly how I wanted that to turn out. Um, <laughs> this is a this is a nice-looking team. Even if William Eves is only an 81 overall, his line mates are absolutely fantastic. And uh, we got a 100-rated McDavid in here as well now, too, so that's scary. And then let's try Carson Lambos in here. See how he, whew. yes, sir. Pinch and balance. That's what we like to see. Um, oh, right. We're still running our other system. That's why this doesn't quite fit is because I didn't switch the systems over yet. I think we'll run it as is for now. It's actually looking really nice. And uh, maybe we give Bear the shot at the first line there. I think that's good. And an 82 rated Lambos is definitely going to hold his own. Um... What about Piero Zabotl? He is an interesting piece here for sure. So I think what we're going to do, we might put Zabotl in here instead. No, it doesn't really make a difference, honestly. Yeah. Um, huh. I mean, Zabotl gets a plus five there, but that's just... Not the best fit, unfortunately. So, I think we keep Lindholm here for now, I guess. I want to play Mahura, or Mayura, however you say. I still don't know how to say his name, honestly. But, I guess we could play it like that for now. It's looking alright. Um, obviously, this system would switch up quite a bit the second that we uh, change our coaching over. But I think we're going to leave it for now. It's looking good. The system is actually spectacular with the chemistry, especially on the forward lines. Like, if we're running plus three forward lines on our top three lines, the NHL is going to struggle with the Oilers for sure. Um, let's just take a quick peek at special teams, too. I know I am kind of spending a lot of time on this, but we do need to get these things done if we are going to improve um, as a team and, you know, hopefully win. <laughs> um, so let's go dry sidle up here. I just realized we don't have an offensive defenseman currently in this system. So I think we're going to switch out Heinen here in exchange for Ethan Bear or um, Bouchard. I think I think Bear is in the... No, it's Bouchard. Okay, so I'm going to switch him out for Bear. 
just for now. And okay, that's plus three. Uh, Poliarvi is a righty. Let's go like that. And how else can we improve this? Tage Thompson's not a great fit. A lot of these guys aren't really a great fit. So let's go ratty there. Um, maybe switch in Lavoie. Yeah, that's better. Okay. And then Thompson, I'm going to switch in exchange for maybe Eves. Uh, ooh. Ooh, William Eves with a plus five on the power play. I think so. I think that is going to work just fine. Um, and then, unfortunately, Pugliarvi is just not quite getting the uh, chemistry we're looking for here. So, you know what I think it is? I think it's Athu Ratty being a two-way forward. And instead, if we toss, like, a playmaker into this system, that is going to work a lot better. So let's try Yamo here. Oh, yeah, that's way better. Okay, so, you know, maybe we'll sacrifice a plus five in exchange to get Ratty some playtime here still. Like, it's still a plus three. It's still really good. Um... Either that, or we go like this, no. I want to try and run a plus five if we can, preferably. I mean, no defense on the one pairing, and lots of defense on the other. Um, it works. It's still a plus three and five. It is the way I want it, but not quite, just because we don't have defensive players in there, but... I mean, you look at Atsu Ratty's defensive category, he's still got 95 stick checking. He's still going to be able to uh, hold down the penalty or the defensive side of the power play just fine. So I think we're good on that. Let's switch out Lavoie here again, second line center kind of thing. Dreisaitl McDavid is just absolutely filthy. And then Yamo Pugliarvi, that's not really going to improve. So let's switch out Yamo just as he is the lowest rated player in exchange for, uh, I want to say Ethan Bear for now, but I'm not sure. Maybe, uh, yeah, okay, we'll go with Bouchard, get him playtime. And then this is where we need to get the offensive defensive or offensive defenseman out of here. I can't speak. Uh, so let's get the bottle in here for sure. That definitely bumps that up. Is this going to make it better? No, not really. Um, apparently, it's just impossible to get a plus one on here, which, you know, I'm okay with. Um, the team's still pretty decent. Let's get Lambos in here for sure. And nobody seems to really fit, so that is is what it is, I guess. Um, let's swap Bear out again for Zabottle, and this is just, you know, improving the negative chemistry here for sure, so... Even though these guys are negative one each, I'm not too worried about that three-man. Hopefully, we don't end up three-man PK too often. Uh, so, yeah, this is looking really good. I think the team's ready to go. we got to edit the uh, AHL quickly as well. Obviously, we don't have everybody playing here. So, let's go Sam Rukov in exchange for Strimbu there. Gold Dobin's going to probably move up too. Yeah, that looks good. And then I think we could get Jones in here actually over probably Sam Arukov. And that's better for sure. All right, so I really like how the system's looking right now. This team is in great shape and uh, yeah, just no complaints really overall here. We got all left-handed defensemen too, funny enough, except for... Samuel Giordano, who, you know, whatever, that, that's how it's going to be. Um, I want to get Helms in the team, preferably. He's a third liner. Chistov is definitely a first liner. Um, Spencer, fourth liner, okay. So let's take a look at the offense here and just see where we can make improvements. So I think Chistov is kind of the one that we have to switch around here. Let's maybe go like this. Beach definitely does not fit there. He is a fourth line center for sure. Hancock's only 22, so that's not too bad. Um, and then Typolis, oh boy, he's a good fit there too. 
Man, what is with all these guys just not fitting anywhere? <laughs> like, actually. Let's swap Chistov in here. Even though he is kind of like our lowest rated center, he's still a pretty decent fit as a playmaker. So, we definitely need to switch. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I like Coupland on the first line. Uh, Austin Wagner we've signed and he's kind of just been a non-event because we haven't really given him too many opportunities overall Helms fits but no one else on his line does so that's interesting we got any other third liners in here Erzberg would fit um, what about Kuffner yeah Kuffner would fit even Robertson okay so we can definitely sub out Robertson for Blumel or Blumel for Robertson sorry Somehow that's still not a plus. That doesn't make any sense to me anymore. And you know what? If Kara's playing on the bottom line, we may as well be playing um, Beach down there instead. But it works. This system is pretty decent overall. And, uh, you know, all plus ones is not bad on the forward group. I was expecting it to be a lot worse, honestly. And, uh, you know, this is looking good for sure. So I like where the team's at there. Special teams, yikes. Um... Well, for one, Josefsson should not be on over a guy like Derek Goldobin or even like Jones, but that's interesting. Okay. Um, let's swap Goldobin for a potentially more gifted offensive player. So a guy like Novak would be a decent fit there instead. I like it. Okay, let's switch Kara for Chistov. Better, for sure. And then let's switch Benson for... I want to say Coupland. Yeah, I think that's the way to go about it still. We'll offset those hands. Okay, this is actually looking pretty good overall. I like how the team is shaping up here uh we're giving nikita chistov an absolute opportunity here <laughs> um to just yeah to just improve and you know kind of get into the flow of you know playing in the team here um let's swap strimbu for gold dobin here that'll be good yep okay that's not bad pk is actually looking gorgeous um and three-man pk is not bad okay so that is the AHL team as well, we get everything kind of set up here and things are looking good. Let's just go and quickly check the captains on both teams here and, and jerseys, obviously. And, okay, Kara Wagner, who's the captain? Nobody's the captain. Okay. Um, who's our highest rated player? I kind of want to name Goldobin the captain just because we know he's going to be here for another year at least, but... If I'm going off of kind of length of being in the AHL, I would definitely say Ryan McLeod's the captain here. Um, but then again, Andreov, same kind of thing. But no, we are going to not not alternate. Sorry, we're going to make Ryan McLeod the captain in the AHL. He's uh, he's definitely been awesome down there so far. Um, what? What are you doing? I'm assigning a captain. Like, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so that's the AHL. It's looking good. The Condors should have a pretty good season overall. And then for the NHL, let's just see how the team looks. So Ratty gets the A. I don't know about that one. I mean, like, yes, he is higher rated, but I would make the argument for quite a few other guys. Um, mainly those guys being either Chicharin, um, maybe Pugliarvi, or... Yamo, or even like Ethan Bear. Like, there's definitely different players that I would name a captain over Ratty to start. Um, let's go Ethan Bear for now. That's my choice. So, yeah. That's the team. That's how it's looking. I think we are going to, you know, we'll just take a quick peek at the uh, draft class coming up here. I don't know exactly what's coming up. Um, but yeah, wingers, we really aren't too worried about that then. And, uh, you know, if there's like some kind of franchise defenseman or something, yes, we might be interested, but 
really, I don't think we're going to be trading up this year. There's not really a lot of defense available at the start, and that's totally okay with me. There's a goalie at 21, though, Dominic Kubis. I mean, hey, we got we got Parbacker already. We're going to be fine. So things are looking good. I think we're just going to sim right through the... Uh, actually, wait. Have I got my scouting set up? I don't think I have. So that might be something else I have to get done here off camera. And actually, you know what? It's not looking too, too bad here. No, actually it is. Never mind. I got 11 scouts. That's bad. And fortunately, there are a lot of scouts this year. So let's see, just based on different regions, not a lot of Q scouts or USA. Not spectacular. Okay, but oh my god, one European scout. Again, not great. No Russian scouts either. Yikes. Okay, so I got to focus on my scouting in the upcoming seasons here. Um, if the team's going to last long term, but um, I think we're going to just get into a full season sim. I'm going to go off camera and everything, but uh, let's just sim to the regular season for now. I will get scouting done off camera and such. Um, William Eves, we will give a trial. I assume he's going to stick with the team since he's, you know, a number two overall pick. Um, we're putting him in every scenario to succeed possible, so... That's kind of where we want to be right now with him. And uh, Dolly Wall is just like, oh, we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen. No, we know what's going to happen. I'm the coach, so or I'm the uh, manager. We're going to let this play out as I choose. So let's just see the team's overall ratings. That's kind of what we're focused on here. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're going to cut it here for now. And then I'll be back. What is that trade? God, that's ridiculous. Anyways, we'll cut it here after I show you guys the overall ratings, and I'll be back with you guys at the end of the season to kind of show you what's going on with everything else here and how the season kind of shapes up, if the Oilers are going to make the playoffs or not, and so on. So this is taking forever. Cool. Okay. Nice. So, guys, this is how our team is looking for the upcoming season. Uh, going up against the Blackhawks' first game of the year, this is what our team is looking like. So, we have got 92 offense, 91 defense, 86 goaltending. When you match that up against Chicago, their offense is better, but nothing else is. So, yeah, that's kind of the Oilers right now. That's how we're looking, and that's what we're going with for this upcoming season. So guys, to end off the 2024-25 regular season, the Edmonton Oilers put up a record of 49, 26, and 7 for 105 points, placing them second in the NHL by the looks of it. Maybe, you know, it's going to be second. It's going to be second. That kind of sucks because they were two points off from a president's trophy which stings but at the same time you know still a very good season overall that's what we wanted to see bouncing back from uh not being so good in the previous year obviously we lose it to the florida panthers who again a good team for sure like they've got lots of good players they've uh they've really kind of come into their own as a franchise here over the last two years or so and uh they're showing it like they're having a good time for sure but we uh we definitely did well um let's see uh, some of our different stats here so our home record was really good our away record was atrocious um and our last 10 was not so great either but our penalty kill was actually was it above average no it was not it was not even close actually um let's see what else Power play, that's an interesting one. Oh, yeah, we are number one in the league for sure. No surprise there. Um, goals against, we were we good or were we bad? Yeah, we were pretty average by the looks of it because we're not in the top or bottom half. Yeah, we were very average there. And then goals four, we were first. Nice. So, yeah, we I assume we had the highest goals for per game. Goals against per game, again, um, we were average. So, yeah, overall, the team did pretty good. We had the second highest point percentage, obviously, in the league right after Florida. And uh, just, yeah, very good season overall from the team by the looks of it. 
Um, as far as point scoring goes, Connor McDavid puts up 110 points, Dreisaitl with 105, and there's the numbers that I was just waiting to see, guys. Look at this guy. William Eaves puts up 75 points in his rookie year, 18 years old. That is fantastic. And then uh, Jakob Verana, obviously also scoring 75 there. Yamamoto had a great season. Um, high goal scoring year for Pugliarvi as well as Atu Ratti. Those guys both had great seasons. Pugliarvi is out with an injury right now, but uh, 62, still a good point total for him. Uh, Chitrin led all defense on our team with 42 points. And then in net, we had Samsonov with 33 wins on the season, 16 for Stuart Skinner there too. Looking at the entire league, we see Nathan McKinnon lead the way, beating out McDavid and Huberto by two and four points. Dreisaitl and McDavid finishing third and fourth in all league scoring. Um, as far as goals go, looks like it's going to be Austin Matthews winning the Rocket this year. Dreisaitl fifth on that list. And... Definitely not as crazy numbers as I've seen in the past for goal scoring, but who knows what's going to happen moving into the future. And then as far as, let's see, who is the assist leader? It was William Nylander. No surprise there. Feeding, um, what do you call it? Feeding Matthews all the time there. Hannafin leads the league in plus minus, so not bad on that. And then as far as rookie skaters go, William Heaves just beats out Shane Wright, and Shane Wright did not play until this year i believe he played the full four seasons in kingston to develop and then bursts onto the scene as a 87 raid player marco ab again did not play until this year he uh, had a lot of time to develop there in the ahl um and he didn't play enough games 20 games wasn't enough to qualify him for the calder by the looks of it so Ooh, um, Raphael Lavoie on there with 40 points as well. So, yeah, William Eves just, just wins the Calder. Scores 41 goals as well in his Calder campaign there. That is fantastic. In the total NHL, um, lots of high-ranking goalies here. Bobrovsky at 36 years old gets 42 wins still. Linus Olmark, who we release, gets 39. Kaden Primo gets 39. Carter Hart gets 38. So, yeah, lots of big-name goalies in here. Um, putting up great numbers overall. Shesterkin was pretty decent too. Um, so for defense, we see John Carlson lead the way with 89 points. That is a fantastic year. Scores 26 goals. Almost gets 30 there. Uh, Mike Green numbers there almost. And yeah, just a lot of fantastic stats there from defense. My goodness, that was a, that was a good year for defenders for sure. So... I think that is kind of it for the statistics there. Good season, obviously, from Edmonton. Not the best ever, but um, definitely a good one. So, guys, overall, you know, could have gone better, but really a fantastic year. Nobody has beaten out McDavid in this entire franchise mode for leading the team in scoring for a season. It just hasn't happened. Drysaddle was five points off this year but uh, just still couldn't get it done, and I find that pretty hilarious, honestly. Oh, man, we get matched against Winnipeg, too. Oh, it couldn't have been, you know, St. Louis or some American team. We're trying to keep the Canadian teams in here, obviously, but it's funny because you look at the playoffs over the last four years, guys, and teams that not you wouldn't expect necessarily, but teams that just haven't won a lot recently, anyways, um, won cups, so that was... Vegas first season, that's awesome. They finally get a cup. Vancouver the next season finally gets a cup. And then Detroit we lost to, which stung because they have more cups than us. And obviously they get another one, that hurts. Um, and then Florida finally gets their first cup. So that's three out of the last four Stanley Cup winners have been teams that have not won a cup. The only team that's in here that hasn't won a cup, as far as I'm concerned, is the Minnesota Wild. Everybody else in here has gotten a Stanley Cup at some point. So maybe it's Minnesota's year. I doubt it, but um, you never know. Let's just, uh, I want to take a look, well, at two lines, obviously. We're going to take a look at Winnipeg here because that's the team we're playing. But I also want to take a look at uh, Minnesota and just see what they are bolstering right now. Um, so yeah, good freaking lineup here. Yikes, Gabriel Landeskog is going to be fantastic. Oh boy, we are in for a battle first round. Yikes. Okay, so yeah, definitely a good team here. 
in Winnipeg. Nothing, you know, crazy special, but uh, they still got lots of good players here. Don't get me wrong for a second. That is a good team still. So we might struggle with them a little bit. Um, I'm just looking around at teams that I haven't really taken a peek at, honestly. Oh, yikes, they got no goaltending. That would explain a lot. Okay, um, but Minnesota, that is the team I'm kind of interested in. They got Oscar Clefbaum there. We traded or we let him go, I think. No, we traded him. We traded him, didn't we? I think so. Who knows? Um, and then who else in here? Uh, Anton Lundell, drafted ninth overall. Not a bad player. Um, lots of, you know, decent players in here for sure. But again, nothing, you know, crazy special. They got Matthew Savoy as well. He's 21 already, but uh, yeah, who knows? Like, who knows what's going to happen? Obviously, this upcoming Winnipeg series that we are not going to get to this episode, but next episode is going to be tough. We are going to have a battle with, not Minnesota, sorry, Winnipeg. Winnipeg's going to be a good team. But anyways... I think that's where we're going to call. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and uh, we're trying to hit that thousand sub goal. I know we can hit it by the end of the year. And also feel free to leave comments to get featured, but that's going to be it for me. This is Etanios signing out and see ya.